Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's chapter is development of tooth. It is a very basic chapter in dental histology or the basic concept to the foundation of dental histology. So all the remaining chapters, all the future chapters like enamel, dentine, pulp, alveolar bone. So everything is connected to this chapter because it is a uh, embryonic stage from which all the other structures are uh, developing. So understanding the basic chapter is very important. The terminologies, the concept in this chapter will give you a good idea or easy to uh, for it will be very easy for you to understand the future chapters if you have the firm grip on this concept. So let's see what is the various stages in tooth development from its embryonic state to a full functioned uh, oral cavity. So this is the embryonic cavity. So we have future brain or developing forebrain. There is a mesenchyme uh, type of tissue which is covering the forebrain and we have developing stomodium. This is the future oral cavity. This is the foregut. This is the pericardium future heart. So this is an embryonic cavity. Okay. And the very early stage of gestation. So what happens is we have a structure which is known as primitive oral cavity or stomodium which is lined by stratified squamous epithelium known as oral ectoderm okay so we have a stomodium here this is a future brain this is a future uh, heart pericardium so in between this is an embryonic cavity you might not be able to imagine exactly so this is a very uh, beginning uh, embryonic stage uh, in the first or second third week of uh, gestation so we have a primitive oral cavity which is known as stomodium and which is lined by oral ectoderm. So what happens after that this oral ectoderm contacts the endoderm of foregut. So this is a foregut. Foregut has endoderm here. So it contacts with endoderm of foregut which creating buccopharyngeal membrane. Okay. So buccopharyngeal membrane is there. It is formed by the endoderm of foregut and the primitive oral cavity that is stomodium. So what happens to the buccopharyngeal membrane is it ruptures. It ruptures around fourth week that is 27th day of gestation it ruptures. So what happens after rupturing? Once it ruptures there will be a connection between oral cavity that is primitive oral cavity and foregut so foregut and oral cavity a connection established so that is happening at 27th day of gestation so then what happens so at around three to four weeks that is 27th day this buccopharyngeal membrane ruptures and connection established and after two to three weeks so around sixth week what happens we have a structure formation which is known as primary epithelial band because this foregut and this connection we have a special type connective tissue here which is known as neural crest or ectomesenchyme in origin which is uh, creating a primary epithelial band around sixth week of intrauterine or life it is happening after three weeks of buccopharyngeal membrane rupturing okay so this is happening at 27th day this is happening at sixth week that is a formation of primary epithelial band because it created from a connective tissue which is a neural crest or ectomesenchyme in origin. So what is the importance of this primary epithelial band? It is giving rise to dental lamina and vestibular lamina. So dental lamina is nothing but the future tooths are originating from dental lamina. Okay, so this primary epithelial band which has got two structures buccal process and lingual process lingual process is known as dental lamina buccal process is vestibular lamina so this connective tissue formation is not very equal in all the areas so it has 
uh, cell multiplication at few areas so that few areas there will be rapid cell mul multiplication so that is giving rise to epithelial band so this epithelial band which uh, invades the underlying ectomesen game along each of the horseshoe shaped future dental arches so we have upper arch and lower arch so this connective tissue proliferation which give rise to epithelial band which invades the horseshoe shaped upper arch and lower arch and which give rise to future teeth so that happens at the sixth week of intrauterine or gestation life after three weeks of buccopharyngeal membrane rupture so after that what happens it divides into dental lamina and vestibular lamina at around seventh week okay so after one week it divides into dental lamina and vestibular lamina which is buccal and this is lingual process so this dental lamina which is giving rise to the future all deciduous teeth so all deciduous teeth arises from dental lamina and the permanent teeth will be arising from the lingual extension of this dental lamina so there will be a lingual extension from which the future teeth arises and the molars that is permanent molars arise from the distal extension of this dental lamina so dental lamina has uh, all deciduous teeth but from the lingual extension the permanent teeth arises and distal extension the molars that is permanent molars arises so the dental lamina is the most important structure which is uh, giving rise to future tooth so we have seen what is stomodium which is connecting with foregut by buccopharyngeal membrane it ruptures at 27th day or uh, after 2 to 3 weeks there will be continuous multiplication of connective tissue which is neurocaster ectomesenchyme in origin which is giving rise to a primary epithelial band which is not everywhere it is proliferating certain areas and which invades the horseshoe shaped upper and lower arches which has got two process uh, lingual and vestibular the dental lamina is a lingual process which is giving rise to deciduous teeth and the lingual extension giving rise to the permanent teeth and the distal extension of dental lamina giving rise to permanent molars so this is the epithelial band so i have a two different pictures this is from a uh, frontal view that is a friend view okay so this is a maxillary or maxilla primitive maxilla and this is a primitive mandible so we have horseshoe shaped arches and this is the epithelial band primary epithelial band from which the future teeth arises okay whereas this is a different view that is a lateral or side view so you have the buccal portion that is a vestibular lamina of primary epithelial band and this is the lingual uh, portion of primary epithelial band which is known as dental lamina from which the future teeth arises so this is a side view and this is a friend view so when you are looking at, at a uh, person so it looks like this the maxilla mandible or the future uh, bones where the primary epithelial band is in the pink color okay so visualizing uh, this concept is little different uh, because uh, the pictures are not in 3d format so this is a side view or lateral view and this is a friend view okay so this is how primary epithelial band forms it invades into the horseshoe shape arches maxilla and mandibular arches and creates epithelial proliferations uh, thereby future dental lamina and vestibular lamina forms so we have learned uh, dental lamina and vestibular lamina are the lingual and buccal portion of primary epithelial band from dental lamina the future teeth arises that is a lingual extension okay the lingual extension so there will be a lingual extension uh, this is a single uh, tooth so we have a set of uh, teeth so the lingual extension will be said so that lingual extension is also known as successional lamina because it produces or it gives rise to the successor teeth that is a permanent teeth okay so lingual uh, portion that is the dental lamina give rise to basically the uh, deciduous teeth so from that 
we uh, need to uh, get the permanent teeth so it arises from the successional lamina which is present in the lingual side of lingual band of primary epithelial band okay don't get confused dental lamina is a lingual part of epithelial band and lingual part of dental lamina sections successional lamina arises and mm, we know permanent molars which is coming from the distal extension because uh, we have uh, molars deciduous molars so deciduous molars succession lamina gives rise to the permanent premolars so we don't have any space for permanent molars in epithelial band so it arises from the distal extension of dental lamina that is a permanent molars for second and third molars so what is the job of vestibular lamina which is a buccal portion of you cannot distinguish uh, vestibular lamina and dental lamina here because this is a frontal view so here you can distinguish this is a uh, vestibular lamina and this is a dental lamina this is a lingual side this is a buccal side okay since it is a frontal view the anterior portion will be the buccal and the posterior part will be the uh, dental lamina okay so vestibular lamina which is also known as lip furrow band it is a buccal portion of primary epithelial band uh, it uh, gives rise to the vestibule vestibule between the lips and uh, cheeks and the tooth bearing area so the vestibule between the lips and cheeks and the alveolar bone which bears the teeth vestibular lamina becomes a lip furrow band between the alveolar bone and lips and cheeks so what happens to this dental lamina so usually dental lamina has a uh, five year period or five year activity so after five year activity it uh, ruptures when the tooth forms the tooth loses its connectivity the dental lamina and the remnants might be present in jaw or gingiva okay so the remnants of dental lamina which is present in the jaw is known as epithelial pearls or islands or epithelial island or epithelial pearl and the remnants of dental lamina which is present in the gingiva is known as cell rest of serrae so this is very important what is epithelial pearl or island and what is cell rest of serrae it is the remnants of dental lamina after its activity the remnants might be present in jaw or gingiva the remnants in gingiva is known as epithelial pearls or islands and the remnants in gingiva is known as cell rest of serrae so this is dental lamina uh, now we will uh, look into the various stages of tooth formation so before that you need to get this concept clear so it will be like this uh, in future there will be uh, formation of tooth bud from dental lamina so before that this is how it forms the primary epithelial band what is vestibular lamina what is dental lamina and what is lip furrow band what is epithelial pearls and what is cell rest of serrae so everything is very important uh, short notes short essays long essays so there are many questions been asked from this chapter so now let's see the various uh, tooth formation stage